nice about this exhibition is that it's a collaboration with the Warrnambool Art Gallery. So we worked on this exhibition together. And it, there's 66 works in the exhibition, paintings, sculptures, but mainly prints and drawings. And works on paper are light sensitive, so they have to be stored away for most of the time, and they only get shown for a few months every five or ten years. And that's what makes this very special. We're pulling out a lot of the great old master pieces from the NGV collection and telling a story about the complex and interesting, fascinating developments in the Renaissance in that early modern period. The Renaissance really starts in Italy where ancient sculptures are rediscovered and they really present a new ideal male and female form and the motifs as well, ancient gods and the drama of Hercules and Cupid and Venus and all of these stories that come with um, ancient culture and mythology were really picked up by Renaissance artists and they had patrons, they had art schools, they had new materials, oil paint was a new discovery and of course printmaking was very important and really for the first time images also circulated around Europe in print so even though the Renaissance really started in Italy you have artists in Germany like Albrecht Dürer picking it up very quickly. Albrecht Dürer is one who is featured prominently in the exhibition because we've got a lot of works by him and he's also been described as a one-man renaissance. He really encompasses the renaissance scholar. He does scientific studies of human proportions, of perspective and really representing the figure and architecture and spaces and nature itself with unprecedented accuracy and naturalism. So Albrecht Dürer wrote a treatise on human proportions and we also have works by him in the exhibition like his Adam and Eve, which is a typically Renaissance work because it combines this accurate proportion of the human body with classical references. So going back to ancient Greece and Rome. So Adam, the figure of Adam, is based on the Apollo Belvedere and Eve is based on the Medici Venus. So they represent the ideal male and female body. And in the background of the print, you see all these animals. Albrecht Dürer was very much about observing nature and studying nature, which we think of as a secular phenomenon, but it was deeply religious. He called it his service to God. So while there were all these new developments in the Renaissance in science and technology and it's a more rational age, um, it is still deeply religious. Artists were really experimenting with new media, they were sketching a lot, they were drawing from life. So um, we've got a fascinating image in the exhibition by Cornelis Court called the Academy of Fine Arts, which shows artists at the Academy where they're studying art. And you can see them copying from sculptures, ancient sculptures, which represented the ideal male and female form. But they're also drawing from skeletons and from life models. So you get this um, interesting insight into artistic practice at the time. One of the key themes in religious Renaissance art was the passion of Christ. Sometimes Christ and the saints are depicted as an idealized form, for example, in Giulio Campagnola's image of St. John the Baptist. Of course, we don't have descriptions of what any of these people looked like, so they're basically invented and a whole iconography develops around Christ and St. Peter, St. Sebastian. St. John, and we've got a great range of images in the exhibition that really shows the variations on the theme, for example, in the depiction of St. Sebastian. And sometimes artists 
focus on the ideal body, which is really reflecting the Greek idea of man made in the image of God. Um, but sometimes they also represent the suffering body that really focus attention on uh, the trials of faith. So Christ's suffering, we really empathize with the pain and the humanity of Christ. And that really is a new development in the Renaissance, is the identification with Christ, the human being. One example in which that is very evident is the Gentileschi painting, The Mocking of Christ, which is a larger-than-life painting. It's, uh, the figures are slightly bigger than real people, and it shows Christ with a crown of thorns, being mocked, being humiliated, and there's a trickle of blood from his wounds, and with this hyper-real style of painting, which is after Caravaggio, and dramatic lighting, you really focus on the skin and the blood, and the red paint is almost like blood. So you get this intense analogy between the paint and the body and the blood.